we wake Hear the birds and see the sun Side by side our fears are done All the good times just begun Let's hold on tight Found what we're looking for in life Call us crazy But things are finally right With you and I The future is bright Hi everybody, welcome back to another Menu Monday This week, as you've seen, I've got some new things for you I'm actually doing a little I'm not saying deep fry, but shallow fry in my pan with some chicken for Big Daddy. He, he likes that. And uh, I did that. I made a macaroni cheese. Those are my recipes. So there's a link down below to those. And then I've got two recipes that I tried that I share them with you. And those links are in the comment box below. So without further ado, let's get cooking. Tonight we're having pork chops and the first thing I'm going to go do is go ahead and season this up. Now this recipe was for uh, pan frying with lard, which I don't have. Um, so I just did a little olive oil in the bottom of the pan. And um, I will have all the ingredients listed at the end and there's a link to the original recipe down below. Now the recipe that I was following said to cover the skillet with the lid and allow the pork chops to cook for 15 minutes. Mine I turned at 15 and they looked to be getting a little overdone so I corrected mine to recipe to do it for 10 minutes per side. It also said to repeat the steps and do it each side two more times but mine were done after I turned them once so it was 10 minutes on one side and 10 minutes on the other and mine were perfect and I think this is probably going to depend on your skillet and how hot you have it but it did say to put it on look here uh, 350 degrees and, and that's what I did and this is electric so I know it was correct but maybe it cooks hotter than other skillets so just be careful i would check your pork chops at 10 minutes but they were absolutely delicious they had a great flavor and um, we both enjoyed them very much Here's a finished plate with broccoli and um, mashed sweet potatoes. Also, I just want to mention it's set to season the pork chops with salt and pepper, which I did. But I also added the Kinder's all-purpose seasoning and uh, paprika. I found this recipe on Facebook. It was just typed out, so I copied it and I've... Um, put that in the comment box below it actually called for kielbasa but i had this ham in the freezer that i needed to use up so all i did is substitute that for the kielbasa you can use whatever you would like as far as a protein super simple super quick i was out running errands all day and this was ready when i got home so i'm just cutting up the meat and you would do the same with the kielbasa and then i'm cutting up an onion and then we will start layering. We're going to start by spraying the crock pot, very important. And then we'll put in uh, one layer of hash browns. I used half the bag, it's a 32 ounce bag. Then we'll add 
half the meat, half the onions, the cheese, and then we'll repeat the layers. This recipe called for cheddar cheese. I was using up all the little packets I had left in the refrigerator. So you can use whatever cheese you would like to, obviously. Now we're going to mix our soup and our milk, which I didn't have milk, so I just used some heavy whipping cream, some sour cream, and then I put in some onion powder and garlic powder. That's right, I added some pepper too. It said salt and pepper. I didn't use salt because of the ham. So I just added the pepper, garlic powder, and onion powder. We're just going to pour this over the top, then you add a little more cheese. You can use as much cheese as you want to. We are cheese lovers, so we may use more than most. Um, then I cook this six hours on low. You could also do it three to four hours on high. This fed us, I think, for two days. We both had lunches left over. I'm trying to think, I don't know if the grandkids come over and eat too, but there was a lot of it, so you could feed many with this. And I'll show you our finished plate. I served this up with a side salad, which was nice pairing. I hope you give it a try. Okay, now I'm making my homemade mac and cheese. I'm sorry about the camera fogging up here, but I do move it. So first of all, we're going to boil our pasta slightly al dente, and then we're going to just drizzle it with some olive oil and put it aside. While that's cooking, I don't keep milk on hand, so when I need it for a recipe, I just make my own, and I keep these packets in the pantry all the time. They're very good. Now the pasta is done and the milk is ready, we're going to move on. We're going to first melt butter in the pan and then we'll slowly whisk in the flour. This is on medium heat and then we'll continue whisking and for about a minute until everything's bubbly and golden. We're going to gradually add in the milk and the heavy cream and we'll continue whisking until everything gets cooked together probably about two minutes and then we'll add some salt and pepper
Now we're going to start adding our shredded cheese. I do about two cups, whisk that in and then do another two. And then I also use these little Velveeta cheese pouches. Uh, I get them and use them for a quick mac and cheese, but I also put them in here too because it's, it's really got a good taste. So we'll add that next. Just keep whisking everything, get it all combined. the cheeses are in we're going to add the pasta back if your pan isn't big enough you can put the sauce mixture into a bowl and mix it up I'm going to spray my casserole dish and then we'll pour our mac and cheese into it I've got some melted butter here and I'm going to crumble in some Ritz crackers and a couple seasonings. I use garlic powder and some paprika just to give it some extra color and flavor. We'll sprinkle this on top and then we're going to bake this in the oven 375 degrees for about 15 minutes until it's nice and bubbly and browned a little on top. here she comes absolutely delicious we ate on it for a couple days we had it with some fried chicken which is going to come up next and I hope you give it a try Today I'm making some fried chicken, and when I say fried chicken, I'm talking about fried in grease. I am not a fan. I prefer baked, air fried, anything but grease fried. But Big Daddy grew up on it. He loves it, and I don't cook it. So I decided I will go ahead, do this for him, see how he likes it, and he absolutely did. So I may do it like once a month or something like that. Anyway, first of all, I parboiled the chicken and you'll find a link below that'll take you to uh, my saffron. It's where you put recipes for people. So I did that so I could keep it myself. Anyhow, uh, the first thing you do is parboil the chicken. It'll tell you how long to do uh, whichever piece of chicken you have, like breasts or thighs or wings or so forth. And then after you've part boiled your chicken, you're just going to dip it in the water and then put it in this house archery chicken breader that you can get. I got it at Walmart, super simple to find. And just put a little bit of corn oil in the bottom of your pan. Cook the chicken 10 minutes per side. And after you've turned, done both sides, it should be ready, but do check it's 165. And you're done. Just put it on a paper towel to um, get the excess grease off. I had this with the mac and cheese you just saw, and I believe I did green beans too. It was absolutely delicious, and I hope you give it a try. It was easy, it's just not super healthy, but once in a while,
I hope you enjoyed this week's meals. I'm actually starting on next menu Mondays today. I've got it in the crock pot right here. It smells delicious. So if you made it to the end of this week's video, please leave me a bird emoji. Oh, sorry, that was my ice maker. But yeah, a bird emoji would be great. Any birds you like or have in your collection. And I'll see you next Monday. All right, love you guys. Bye-bye.